is great to gather together once again, gathering from our scattered weeks, from all that we've done, wherever we've been, uh, whatever we've been doing, whoever we've met. Uh, my name is Ed, and I want to offer a particular welcome. If this is your first time gathering with us here today, whether in person or um, online, may you know that you are most welcome here. Also, on at the outset, uh, begin by welcoming Rod back uh, from his time in Sofia this week, um, the capital of Bulgaria, uh, representing the church. Um, if you want to find out more about what he got up to, and in particular, um, a possible new mission partner that we're looking uh, to adopt as a church, that's alongside Claire Grimble in Nepal, uh, the Mohan family in Peru, and the Kakishas in the Holy Land, then come along next Sunday um, to the lunch that we're having after our morning gathering. Speak to Rod if you want to find out more. So bring your own packed lunch. The World Mission Team are meeting, uh, and anyone is welcome to come and hear about it. And I know uh, you also want to just say thank you ever so much for all your prayers over the last week. Um, it's been a, a really amazing time. Uh, and as I say, do come along and find out more about that next week. We're celebrating, as you can see, communion this morning. So if you're online joining us, this is a moment uh, where you been notified to go and grab something um, at some point, um, so you can share in this remembrance um, a little later uh, as we celebrate round the Lord's table together. Psalm 150, uh, it says this, it says, Hallelujah, praise God in his holy house of worship, praise him under the open skies, praise him for his acts of power, praise him for his magnificent greatness. Praise him with a blast on the trumpet. Praise him by strumming soft strings. Praise him with castanets and dance. Praise him with banjo and flute. Praise him with cymbals and big bass drum. Praise him with the fiddles and mandolin. Let every living, breathing creature praise God. Hallelujah. I love that. Let every living, breathing creature praise God. What a statement. Um, and we're going we're gonna to praise God in a moment with the song, King of Kings. The, the children uh, uh, and anyone else who bundles in um, are creating some shakers this morning, which they're either going to use in worship or maybe they'll use later if they haven't yet taped the top on. Otherwise, pasta will go everywhere even more than it already has this morning. Um, but as a drummer, um, and I think you can never have too many drums, just putting it out there, um, in that, that song. It says, praise him with cymbals and a big bass drum. Um, but, um, but I thought maybe we'd leave that for another week and we'd start off with some shakers and maybe we'll, we'll get there. But we're going we're gonna to sing the song King of Kings. And it tells the story of, of Easter, of, of Jesus, all he came to do and, and did uh, about the hope that we can find in him. His friendship, his leading, his, his guiding, his help through life. And whether you grasp all the words or not, and I'm not just talking to the children because there may be adults here who kind of go, I don't quite understand what that word is or that line means or that sort of thing. I love the chorus because it just powerfully states, you know, our response, our reply, our answer to the invite that is put before us. Ted, can we have the words of the chorus up on the, the screen, please? Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. That's what we're able and free to do this morning. Uh, however we have arrived, whatever kind of week we've had, whatever week may lay ahead of us, we gather to praise the King of Kings. So I invite you to stand if you're able as we sing together now.
want to invite us just to pray together. Let's just bring our prayers of praise to God, just telling him out loud how amazing we think he is, how wonderful, how glorious. Lord, you are above all else, and we declare that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We bring you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. Thank you for your love, your grace, your friendship. Oh, thank you, God. Amen. Praise you, Lord, that there is none like you. Praise you that we get to gather and to, to worship you, that we're, we're free here to be able to, to sing songs and meet as your people. Uh, praise you that you welcome us all, uh, young through old, uh, whatever uh, lines might be drawn by the world around us. You, you don't do any of that, and you welcome us all to come into your presence. Praise you uh, for who you are. Uh, may you be glorified and worshipped above all else. We give you all the praise, Lord. Amen. Do please be seated. We're going to continue in worship in a little bit. Um, before that, though, um, a few family matters that I just want to bring to us this morning. Um, various bits and pieces that are going on in the life of the church. Then we'll pray for the children and the young people as they head to their activities. Um, initially, just to begin, obviously following the passing uh, of Les Terrell, um, it's uh, details are in the news sheet, but his funeral is taking place on May the 13th, 13th of May at 1 o'clock over at Eastbourne Crematorium. The service is going to be live streamed, and we're looking to actually live stream it here for any who would like to gather here. Obviously, people are free to go over, um, and, and Kevin... And Graham and Martin, his three sons, very stressed that, that it's an invite to all. Um, but that's something we're looking uh, to do here. If that's something you'd be interested in, do please get in touch with Joe in the office, just so we can kind of gauge where we'll potentially place it, whether in here or up in the youth room or wherever on that day um, in terms of live streaming. Kevin did really want me to emphasize as well, though, um, that afterwards, um, whether you go to the crematorium or you come and view the live stream here afterwards, um, the family are gathering and friends at the Powder Mills Hotel. Uh, and he really wanted me to stress that that is open to all, whether you gather here or, or there. Um, but do please come back. So that's uh, 13th of May, 1 o'clock, uh, followed by a gathering at the Powder Mills afterwards. And let's continue to be praying for the family um, at this time. Um, 13th of May is still quite a way off. Um, and so just in the next few weeks particularly um, in the arrangements, but just in all that needs to be dealt with um, at this time. The other thing I want to mention this morning, uh, or rather, uh, let's begin. Can we uh, roll the film, please, Ted? Yes, three weeks today, the Community Sports Sunday. And can I say thank you very much for the shaking that was accompanying that? It was brilliant. Loved it. Um, Community Sports Sunday, uh, 12th of May, uh, building on the success of last year's Community Sports Sunday in partnership with Battletown Football Club. Um, Battle Baptist Church are going to be hosting another day uh, for the community. As you'll see from that, timings are slightly different. This year, we're moving it slightly earlier. It's running from 9 through till 2. Um, that's to link in with the Junior Park Run that happens regularly on a Sunday up at the Rec. Um, and because of that, 
on that Sunday, there will be no morning gathering here uh, at all. Um, instead, the 6 p.m. is going to look a little different that Sunday in particular. Um, as we actually celebrate 20 years, I kind of put it on there as, as uh, football and faith, but 20 years of what, what initially started as Battle Baptist Football Club, Battle Town Football Club, uh, this mis- ministry we're privileged to be a part of into this community. Um, we're going to have flyers um, which will be available for next week, which have the kind of information that's uh, in terms of what's going on that day. Uh, but please be praying, praying for weather. Um, you know the country we live in, it's what we've got to do. Um, it was a glorious day last year. It's going to be a glorious day again this year. Um, but be praying for that, praying for the planning and the logistics uh, as we promote it over the next few weeks um, that people will come. But also pray for the evening. We're going to try and invite a number of people from within the, the football club and who've been connected with the football club to the evening gathering um, uh, as we just give thanks to God for all that he's been doing and really pray into all that is ahead. Um, and also, we're going to be, uh, from next week as well, looking for volunteers, if you're willing to be involved in it, um, in terms of the practicalities there. You don't have to, you know, put on any boots and lace up and run around and play football. Uh, you may have spotted there was me last year in the veterans match. Sadly, that won't be happening this year. Um, and that won't be asked of you either, unless you want to. Um, but it would be something that, again, as a church, this is a great opportunity for us to engage in the community um, and really uh, be a part of this great event. In terms of children and young people, this morning Tim is heading up uh, the children. Joe's with the, the young people. Um, so I want to pray God's blessing over them uh, if you'll join me in that. Now, Lord, I want to thank you for the fact that we're here as family. Um, we're here welcomed by you. Uh, uh, and I pray, Father, for the children and young people this morning that you'll really bless them. Bless them in all the different things that they're doing um, uh, as they explore what it means to, to know you, to love you, to to be your friend, um, particularly for all that they're facing at the moment as well um, in life, uh, thinking particularly of those who are nearing uh, exam season here, Lord. Uh, would you continue just to be their peace in, in all of that? Help them to remember what they've, they've learnt, um, but just be their peace, Lord, um, throughout it all, and bless them today, we pray. Amen. Children, young people, we will catch you all a bit later on. Um, have a great time in the different things you're doing. Um, I'm sure Tim will be blessed. Take your shakers with you. Um, I'm going to hand over to Emma, who's going to continue to lead us in worship. I do wonder if those that sit in the balcony sit so because it makes them feel younger because half or three quarters of the balcony have just left. <laughs> um, Esther's nodding, so yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so if you feel like you need some youth, that's where you need to sit upstairs. Um, I'm reminded before we um, sing, Jesus said, let the little children come. Um, we're called to have childlike faith, not be childish, but be childlike. And I love this um, story, and it's in all, th- all the Gospels, and it's about the feeding of the 5,000. And this is from John 6. Jesus says, when Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, who was one of the disciples, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Don't you love Jesus' question for thousands of people? Where shall we buy bread? And then he only asked this to test him, for he already had in mind what he was about to do. Of course he did. Philip answered him, it would take more than a half year's wages to buy enough bread for even one to have a one by each. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. How far among so many? But Jesus said, have the people sit down. And as we know, he broke, he gave thanks, he broke it, and it was enough to feed 5,000 men And then all the women and children on top of that. Um, Have faith like a little child. Come with whatever in your hands. That was the boys' pack lunch. So in our household, that might be um, some crackers, a yogurt tube, a packet of raisins, maybe a carrot, packet of crisps if you're pushing the, the boat out. That's not a lot, is it? We come with whatever we have in our hands. Perhaps today you feel like your hands are empty. Perhaps you feel like they're brimming with loads. Um, 
But that little boy had his packed lunch, and whatever we have, it's enough. And so this first song is, Come, Now is the Time to Worship. So I wonder what you feel like you have in your hands today. Do you feel like you've got a whole laden full? Perhaps you feel like you've got, yeah, not even a packet of raisins. <laughs> Come, not because you've got it all sorted out, not because you know the answers to all the questions, not because um, you feel even like you're enough. Just come as you are because you're a child of God and he asks you to come with your little pack lunch, with your childlike faith, and actually that's all he asks, just to come. So let's come and worship. Lord Jesus, we come like little children because we are your children. Help us to lay at the feet of Jesus our worries, our doubts, our questions, our trials and our sufferings we give to you. And we come, just as we are. And we thank you, Jesus Christ, for what you did on the cross. And that example of love. As we come, 
Fill us with your love. Fill us with your presence. That you might be glorified. Because it is Christ through us that is at work in us. whole world in your hands 
It is a children's song, but it is a truth. And so I invite you now to speak the names of those countries that are on your heart this morning out loud. There's so many we can talk over each other, but what countries are on your heart? What countries do you long to see redeemed for, for Jesus? Burma, Indonesia, Bulgaria, yes Lord. Lord, for all of those countries and all the ones we've forgotten, for the ones that are just being formed perhaps um, and sovereign states and everything in between, your kingdom come and your will be done in each and every one. May you rule and reign. Amen. Amen. Do you please have a seat. As we move to share in the Lord's Supper, I want to invite those who are serving, if you want to come and have a seat uh, near the front or at the front. I want to invite us just to take a moment and just to take a, a breath was the kind of phrase that came to mind, but just to to be present here and now. For us just to stop and in this moment, maybe just to, to picture, whether it's an image or it's a, it's a Bible verse or it's just something that, that draws us to this meal. To put aside all other things. As we come to remember. And may we know that we are welcomed here. You are welcomed here. All are welcomed. This meal is open to all. So here is the table of the Lord. We are gathered to his supper, a foretaste of things eternal. So we can come and we are fearful to be made new in love. We can come when we are doubtful to be made strong in faith. We can come when we are regretful to be made whole. We can come old and young because there is room for all. Let's pause and just in the silence, take this opportunity to bring our confessions before God in repentance to receive his grace and forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may be perfectly able to love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I want to read from 1 Corinthians 11, where... Paul tells us of that first Lord's Supper, that first communion, that first feast. He says, For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it and remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let me pray. Loving God, we're... We've praised you this morning in a very small way already. Um, We've thought maybe a little bit about what that word means. But we praise and we thank you for the love shown to us in Jesus Christ. We thank you for his life and his ministry and the, the story that announces the good news of your kingdom and demonstrates its power in the lifting up of the downtrodden, the healing of the sick, and the loving of the loveless. We thank you for his sacrificial death upon the cross, for the redemption of the whole world, and for your raising him to life again as a foretaste of the glory we shall share. So we come this morning, Lord, we give thanks for this bread and this juice, symbols of our world and signs of your transforming love. Send your Holy Spirit, we pray, that we may be renewed into the likeness of Jesus Christ and formed into his body. This we pray in his name and for his sake. Amen. Jesus said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in memory of me. I want to invite you, um, as you were served, to take and eat this morning. The bread is is gluten and dairy free. The juice is non alcoholic. Um, if for whatever reason, as the the bread comes to you, you don't feel in that place this morning, um, then you can just simply pass it on to the next person, or just say no thanks to the the person who is is serving you. But I pray that you may know God loves you. God loves you more than than you are ever going to be able to understand, more than I or anyone else is ever going to be able to put into words. And he longs to know you personally and to know you in whatever you're facing at the moment, Um, whether that is something that you don't even talk about uh, to others. And if you're joining us from elsewhere this morning, whether live or at another time, I want to pray God's blessing over you in particular this morning and and an extra blessing if you're on your own this morning uh, or tuning in, uh, that you may know that God loves you and you are just as valued and as special uh, to him as to anyone who is here or in other other gathering of his people today. He loves you um, and he longs for you to know that truth. So as we take and we eat, may we know the presence and the power of God as we remember what Jesus did for us, giving his body up on that cross in our place.
in the same way after supper, he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in memory of me. I was just struck a moment ago by that word new. Yeah, the new covenant. Jesus brings transformation. He doesn't just kind of say, well, I'm going to patch you up and leave you pretty much the same way with a few sticking plasters. No, it's a new covenant, a new opportunity, a new invitation to know God again. As we uh, do, as, as our practice here, we'll, we'll be served um, the juice and then just invite you to hold on to it and we'll drink together. Uh, an opportunity for us to remind ourselves that we're called to be part of the body of Christ, that the family uh, together um, recognize our unity. Um, we are saved personally, but we're called to be part uh, of the church of Jesus Christ together. Turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in his wonderful face And the things above will grow strangely dim Let us drink and be thankful 
for Christ's blood was shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. Help us, Lord, so that we can love in all sincerity, loathing what is evil and clinging to what is good, that we might be devoted to one another, sisters and brothers, honoring each other above ourselves, that we might be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, that we might share with God's people who are in need and practice hospitality, with your help that we might bless those who persecute us, blessing and not cursing, that we will repay evil, not eat, repay evil for evil, nor be overcome by evil, but by the power of your spirit, we will overcome evil with good. Lord, help us to live as lives of your kingdom, bringing glory to you above all else. Amen. So servers, collect the glasses. The worship team are going to lead us.
Yes, Jesus, human words don't even describe you at times. You are so magnificent and majestic. We love you. Thank you for what you did on the cross, Lord Jesus. And thank you that we can live in the light of that. Amen. Do please sit down um, and then we're going to watch something on the screen. It was Will Guidada, an American restaurateur based in New York City, who said this. He said, I believe that whatever you do for a living, you can choose to be in the hospitality business. I would want to nuance that slightly and say, I believe that whatever we do, we can choose to be in the hospitality business. I'd like you to turn with me, if you have a Bible, open it up or turn it on to 1 John uh, and chapter 4. I'm going to read from verses 7 uh, to 12. Uh, 1 John, um, along with 2 and 3 John and Jude, come just before Revelation. Um, so rather than kind of work your way through the New Testament to find it, it's, I find it easier to just go to the back and work your way back. But 1 John, chapter 4, and I'm going to read verses 7 to 12. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. We start a new series of talks today. Um, along with a few other bits and pieces, um, such as the Sports Sunday and that sort of thing. Uh, this series is going to take us right through uh, to the summer, um, entitled Stranger Love, exploring the radical hospitality of Jesus. You know, one of our values as a church, you may or may not be aware of, is welcome. Welcome to all just as they are. But what does that actually mean, though? Um, it's great to have these statements that we put up on the wall every so often, and you can put in a news sheet and bandy around and that sort of thing. But, but how is that actually meant to be outworked in terms of our lives as whole life disciples? You know, Monday to Saturday and Sunday too. You know, what does it actually look like? Now, at the outset, uh, I want to say two things uh, about two definitions really, um, that I want to share, um, both for today, but actually throughout this series. Um, the first one is the word welcome. Um, welcome. Um, welcome is not purely about how we greet people when they arrive on a Sunday, or when someone physically enters into your house, or as you encounter them, maybe for the first time during the week. Yeah, that's not what welcome is in its entirety. That is part of it. Um, the size of it we could debate as to how much it is, but it's so much more than that. The other is hospitality. Hospitality is not purely about having someone come over to your home for a meal. That's not what we're, we're talking about here. That is one expression of hospitality and how it can look. 
And it's an area um, that there are many I mean, within the church here are really gifted in. And if you are, I want to really encourage you to keep being gifted in it and using that gift. Um, but hospitality is so much vaster and, and broader than that. And I think it's important that at the very outset, we just hold those two things that we don't either switch off because, well, this is for something for people who do that sort of thing or have that certain gift or on that road to the rest of us. We've just got to put up with this for the next few months. You know, the church pastor, Eugene Peterson, he said this. He said, the two most difficult things to get straight in life are love and God. More often than not, the mess people make of their lives can be traced to failure or stupidity or meanness in one or both of these areas. It goes on to say the basic and biblical Christian conviction is that the two are intrinsically related. Love and God. It's not a case of, well, you can kind of have one without the other. No, they're, they're, they're intertwined. So to begin with, I think we just need to hear the truth or maybe remind ourselves of it. You know, bring it back into focus. The reality, that is, that God loves us. It's okay, you're allowed to smile at this point. Um, you're allowed to be happy. Um, obviously, there's definitely silence there. Um, and I know we're in a church building and all that. God loves me. Yeah, that is that's amazing. God loves you. There's a little more. We're kind of slowly warming up. Um, God loves us. You know, Emma spoke on Easter Day about the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That's Jesus, just in case uh, you're confused. That whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. You know, for God so loved the world. That's what we've just celebrated. And, you know, it's so easy, well, we just go through the motions of it. We do it because that's kind of one of the things we do every, you know, third Monday, Sunday of the month. That's it. You know, last week, if you were here, Beth reminded us from uh, Romans 8, nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Nothing. Again, I think that's quite exciting. Um, I think that's quite amazing. That's quite awesome. You might go, but what about... The, uh, no, no, that doesn't separate you. Yeah, how about that? No, no, no. That's a, have you thought about this? Ed? No, no, no. Nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, Jesus makes it possible for us to know God again, to receive his love. And for us to be able to do life together, I mean us and God. I mean, we do life together as well as church. But, but actually to do life with God, for him to be with us uh, day in, day out, wherever you might find yourself, whether at work, at home, down the shops. You know, that's what we've celebrated in the Lord's Supper, in the breaking of bread, in the drinking of juice. You know, the hope of the world you know, that God gave himself up so we could be saved. God loves us. Brilliant. Excellent. So if the band could come back, please. Um, we're going to move into a time of response this morning um, as we draw things. No, we're not. Um, a, I think we haven't quite grasped the fact maybe that God loves us. Um, and there's part of me that doesn't really want to move on yet. Um, but we need to recognize there is a response that comes from that. God loves us, but, you know, and yes, we do need to, to just sit and, and recognize that. Uh, and I'm aware that's very much what kind of I spoke about on Good Friday, if you were here, that sometimes we rush on and maybe we just need to recognize God loves us. God loves you. Really, God loves you. But actually, it's then that response of saying, OK, so God loves us and we are therefore to love likewise. In that reading I brought from 1 John 4, verse 11 says, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. As a theology professor, Clifton Black, he puts it this way. He says, Our love generated by God is not static. It matures in acts of obedience. I'm going to say that again. Our love generated by God is not static. It matures in acts of obedience. Uh, you know, putting it another way, if we don't love one another, I don't know how we can say we've truly received the love of God. 
Because I think, as I read the Bible, that's, that's the proof that I've received the love of God, that I'm seeking to love other people. And let's just be honest, I don't get it right all the time. Um, and I don't know about you, but I make loads of mistakes. But if that's not my driving force, if that's not you know, the spark within me, if that's not my heart's desire, then have I truly received the love of God? Put it this way. Um, if you have a bit of pipe and it's clogged, you know, however much water you might pour into one then, if it's clogged and it's not coming out the other end, something's not right. Arguably, the pipe could be a bit useless. Uh, you know, God puts his love into us that it might flow out and therefore be received by others as we go about our lives. You know, God loves us so we can love others. Which leads me to that question um, of, okay, so that's great, but, but how do we do that? And this is where we turn to Jesus. Um, we're able to look at the examples of what he did, um, how he handled situations, how he interacted with individuals, how he went about encountering uh, and treating people as he met them through his everyday life. And we're going to look over the course of this series at a number of different accounts. Um, They're all going to come from the Gospel of Luke. Uh, But of Jesus's, well, yeah, just the way he went about and met with people and what it looked like for him to show hospitality in situations um, as he went about his ministry. What I want to briefly reflect on now, though, just comes from the book of John, um, both kind of linking to the passage from 1 John, but also um, from the account of the Last Supper. And it's John 13. And it's where Jesus washes his disciples' feet. Just a a few verses. Jesus, reading from verse 3, says, Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, got up from the meal, the Last Supper, uh, that meal that we've just celebrated. It wasn't literally they all just turned up and Jesus just broke bread and ate and they drank wine. No, they'd had this meal together. They'd been celebrating the Passover. Jesus uh, says he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. And then later on in verse 12, it says, when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. You know, when Jesus washed the disciples' feet, he, he demonstrates to them, very practically, love uh, and servanthood. And in many ways, as I read that, I think, you know, we might expect him to conclude by kind of, he's washed their feet, then gesturing to them, they go, oh, come on then, well, who's going who's gonna to clean my feet then? You know, I've cleaned your feet, come on in, you know, what about me? Then in verse 14, it says, now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, You also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Now, let's not get caught up on or misunderstand. I don't believe the meaning of this passage is that we need to start washing feet every time we meet someone. Um, The context um, that Jesus is living in, that we're reading this passage, is very different. Um, We're not going to set up a station in the foyer Um, So that every Sunday you've got to whip your socks off or whatever and and have your name between your toes clean before we can walk in. I see some of you sighing with relief at that point. Um, It's it's asking that question, though, how does that translate today? What does that look like? Jesus was loving them and, and serving them so that they could receive that love and then go and share that love with others. And that illustration of washing feet was one that was very relevant um, to their day um, and to those who had gathered. I believe our response is to be one of radical hospitality that looks, it's going to look, well, a whole load of different ways. It's going to raise a whole load of questions. If you've read the the newsletter article uh, this week, you'll hopefully picked up from it that, that I've got a lot of questions with this. Um, and maybe I shouldn't say that as the person at the front who's actually introducing the new sermon series, um, but I have, because actually, if we're really going to look at what does it mean 
to show radical hospitality, to, to respond to the example of Jesus, well, well what is it going to look like? And where are those lines, as I referenced in the article, that maybe, well, well where do we draw the line? Or do we draw the line? Or, or you know, should we rub some out? Or how do, how do we outward that? And then the whole thing, and let's be honest, and I don't think it's just me, but it would be easier just to kind of do, connect with people that are like me and I get on with. Because um, there are people that, well, who aren't like me and maybe I don't always get on with. Um, or people who like the same things as me. You know, all those who love watching films and say, yeah, welcome, come on in, I'll have you. And the rest of you, I'm not so sure. Um, it'd be so much easier, wouldn't it, if we just picked and choose those people that we want to spend our time with or that, that we want to show the love of God to. But I believe actually that's not what God is calling us to do. You know, only yesterday um, there was a conversation on the WhatsApp group um, that the football club players have. Um, and they were kind of liaising around the, the match that had been called off and whether they were going to play another just kick about and that sort of thing. Um, and I made a comment um, on it, um, not offering to play, um, but, and I incorrectly typed a word um, that basically made me look really stupid. Um, so there was lots of kind of emojis that were put to it of laughing faces and all that sort of stuff. Um, and there was part of me that I went away thinking, oh, what was the point in that? Um, why did I even try? Because um, it would be a whole lot easier if I didn't. But it's actually said, no, I believe God wants me to show the love of God to those football players. Um, and that means you're hanging out with them. That doesn't necessarily mean turning up my Bible um, and repeating John 3.16 at them every time I see them. Because I'm not sure that is the way that Jesus would want me to show hospitality to them. But it's about engaging. And sometimes we get it right. Sometimes we get it wrong. Sometimes we look like fools, um, as I, I think did yesterday. I wonder, though, as a starting point for us today, uh, as we begin this series, maybe it's asking that question and referring to the, going back to that illustration of that pipe. I've just asked that question, is our pipe clear today? Is our pipe clear? Is there anything that is blocking it? Are there, there views that we have or are there things that we've done or we will not do um, that are potentially getting in the way of what God might want to do through us in showing the love of God to those around us? And maybe it's actually, well, we know that there are things that are in the, in the way. And maybe we need to actually deal with those. Maybe it's actually just saying, God, will you help me? Uh, work through or just just offer some of these questions that I have to you. I, I don't quite know what the right answer is, but I just want to offer it to you and pray that you will lead me. That we might be able to love those we meet and encounter through our lives. Your God already knows where we're at. He already knows what we're thinking. He already knows the views that we have in terms of who we think should be welcomed, who we think we should show hospitality to, and who we think maybe shouldn't, whether we'll speak those truths out or not, he already knows. But I think it's about us maybe just starting by saying, okay, God, would you work in me? Would you move in my life that I can share you and your love with others? You know, a couple of years ago, um, some of you will be aware um, there was a manhole cover in our garden up at the manse. Um, and one day, uh, I was down in the garden, I suddenly realized that the lawn was really rather moist. Um, and that was because this manhole cover, and the brickwork around it, was broken. And so raw sewage was kind of pumping out and bubbling over. Uh, and so it wasn't just water on our lawn, it was all manner of, you can imagine. Uh, now, just to give the story context, um, the sewage pipe uh, goes underneath our garden. It doesn't come from our house. Um, it literally just goes underneath our, our gun. That's all it is. And it's sealed, so you never, you know, you don't, didn't really think anything of it. Um, and so we got various people out to try and sort it uh, and unblock it. And finally, this guy came, and, um, and it, it took forever. He was there for ages trying to you know, do all different sorts of responses to try and get rid of this blockage. In the end, um, he actually had to come down onto Mount Street and we're a fair way up Mountjoy, um, down a Mount Street, and pump water from the bottom, because the blockage was much further down, um, and he had to use like, water from a tanker, high pressure, to actually shift it, because it was so stuck in the pipe. 
Um, and it was only through doing that that they managed to dislodge whatever it was, let's not go there, um, and clear the pipe, uh, and thus our garden was no longer disgusting. If we know that there's anything that is stopping us from showing the love of God to others, we need to do something about it, not as a pointing finger, but actually so that we can be all that God intends us to be, all that he longs for us to be. The love that he has for you, he wants you to share it and live it and speak it out into the world. I want to finish um, with this. Uh, and if the worship band do want to come up this time, for real. Um, I've started reading various books and, and different things around this whole theme of, of hospitality um, as part of kind of preparing for this, this series and for the, the, the different talks and that sort of thing. And this is by a lady called uh, Rosaria Butterfield. Uh, and I share it this morning as maybe as a challenge. I share it as, as a bit of a personal aspiration for, for me, maybe as a prayer for us as a church as we go through this series, we explore um, what it means to, to live lives that, that demonstrate the radical hospitality of Jesus. She writes this. She says, radically ordinary hospitality. Those who live it see strangers as neighbors and neighbors as family of God. It says they recoil at reducing a person to a category or a label. They see God's image reflected in the eyes of every human being on earth. They know they are like meth addicts and sex trade workers. They take their own sin seriously, including the sin of selfishness and pride. They take God's holiness and goodness seriously. They use the Bible as a lifeline with no exceptions. She says, the truly hospitable aren't embarrassed to keep friendships with people who are different. They know that there is a difference between acceptance and approval, and they courageously accept and respect people who think differently from them. They don't worry that others will misinterpret their friendship. Jesus dined with sinners, but he didn't sin with sinners. Jesus lived in the world, but he didn't live like the world. This is the Jesus paradox. And it defines those who are willing to suffer with others for the sake of gospel sharing and gospel living. Those who care more for integrity than appearances. Let me pray. Lord, I pray that you would take us from this point as your people onwards. I pray that you would work Holy Spirit in our lives and that you would do the most beautiful things as we humbly seek to respond to your call. Amen.
Yes, Lord Jesus, that is our heart's desire in this moment, but we pray that that would be a transformative heart's desire, not just for this moment, but for every moment, every day. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you'd keep working in us, healing and transforming and unblocking those places that don't honour you. We're going to sing one more song before we draw our time to a close. Um, but if you'd value prayer, please don't rush off. Um, either find someone as we're singing or, or afterwards as well as we respond to what God has been saying to us this morning. Amen. Yes, we love because he first loved us, but we also love that because we know there's a place with no more suffering, no more pain, no more tears, no more sickness. Um, no more doctor's visits because we won't need them um, and there's going to be a higher throne and we're going to sing his praises. reminder that we are gathering again at 6 p.m. today. We gather twice 
on a Sunday. Uh, the evenings are a space for worship and prayer, for listening to God. You just really just see what Holy Spirit wants to do. And so I really do encourage you to come along and join us if you're able to from 6 p.m. As we gather, go now, having gathered back out, scattered across the week. May those words from Psalm 150 that we began with be a true account of the week that lays ahead of us. Let every living, breathing creature praise God. Hallelujah.